Now, this is real science. It has real uncertainties, and those are <sighs> worrisome. And that's what I'd really like to talk to you about. That's what I've worked on is, is those uncertainties, because what do we see? The warming might be a little less. It might be a little more. It might be a lot more. If we see anything wrong with the models over time, it's that the world seems to have changed a little more than the models like. If you look at any of the projections that the, the IPCC supplies, they are smooth. If you look at any history of the climate, it is bumpy. And a change that is less expected and arrives more rapidly is harder to deal with. The projections have said the ice sheets are going to behave themselves. The ice sheets are not behaving themselves very well right now. And so when we look at the uncertainties, unfortunately, they're sort of on the bad side. And if you were to say, let's take the best estimate of what we get, the most likely thing is that we face problems that can be solved if people address them, and they can be solved without completely breaking the bank. And yes, the uncertainties are such that the problems might actually be smaller than that. And don't kid anybody, they might be. It might warm a little bit less. We might have missed something somewhere. And it might be a little worse than that. And... There's a long tail of the distribution. We flew out on the plane uh, not very long ago, and you know what happens when you fly. You know the most likely thing is you're sort of seated next to somebody else, and you can't get your elbows out, and the plane is bumping around in turbulence, and you get there 10 minutes late. And you know, so your most likely outcome is that there's things that you're not very happy about on the plane. And it might be better than that. You might have an empty seat next to you, and you they, Upgrade you to first class, and you know you have a great flight. And you know maybe you you really you're sitting next to the person that hangs over into your seat, and it's really rough. And maybe while you're sitting next to the person who hangs over into your seat, the plane flies into a mountain, and you're dead. Okay. <laughs> Those of us in the developed world, those of us who actually have money and are here to celebrate the Tyler Prize, all we expect things to be almost as good as they can be. Not everybody in the world is that true for already, but let us look at the future and say that while it could be better and it could be worse, there is a long tail of the distribution that could be really bad. Let me look at it a few different ways. If you look at the warming that's expected, right down here at this little one at the bottom, there is some central estimate. It might be a little bit less. It might be a little bit more. It might be a lot more. Notice at the top, we keep talking about global average surface temperature. Nobody lives in the global average surface temperature. The global average change is what happens out in the Pacific Ocean. What happens on land is that essentially everybody gets above average warming because the land warms more than the ocean. This really is Lake Wobegon, and that is not something that's to be proud of. Let me take you to the ice sheets. Um, I have gone. I don't get to go as much as I used to. It's a wonderful thing if you ever get the chance to go. The ice sat in, this is Greenland, and the ice sat right here at the Little Ice Age, and now it's back up there and racing away. Uh, this one is not as, as important as the same glaciers doing this in the Himalaya, but um, uh, these are some caribou out on the ice sheet trying to get away from the mosquitoes, and this is a musk ox, and these are some, this is an Arctic fox, and... This is, I've shown many of you this picture over the years. We have been in Greenland a month. The USA Today over here in the corner is a month old, okay? And it is perfectly fine. <laughs> Good day in Greenland, bad day in Greenland. Um, and, <laughs> okay, we went to Greenland to drill ice cores. We pulled the ice cores out of the ground. We read the ice cores. These are a few of the things that I was involved with. There's a big community doing wonderful things. Uh, the bolded ones are people might be out here by tomorrow. When we show an ice core record, I can pound on the table and say this is a climate record, and that's why. And so here is a climate record. It starts 17,000 years ago. This is green is temperature in Greenland. Red is snowfall. Comes up to the day. The last time that we had a really big warming, different cause, but the last time we had a really big warming, it did not arrive smoothly and gradually. It staggered. And these staggers are actually fairly big. In Greenland, that one is about 10 years, order of 10 years is about 10 Celsius, 18 Fahrenheit. Uh, Birmingham, Alabama, up to sort of Bangor, Maine, something like that in 10 years. Okay, now that's, that's a big climate change. When you see a smooth curve, hope for that. 
This particular one, so Greenland staggered. What's the big deal? Um, here's a comparison between a little window. If you take this sort of light blue band right in here and blow it up, that's the green curve on top. And the blue one here is a record from a cave formation in China from Larry Edwards' group, Wang et al. Um, and what actually happened is when Greenland got cold in all of these stagger events, um, the monsoon weakened. And there's a couple of billion people sort of are waiting for that to rain on their crops. And it's not Greenland that you're worried about. Um, and what, you know, so we've looked at what is that? What, what, what's going on? And so these are some of the other papers that I've had a little to do with that, that looked at what that is. And I think we can say with pretty good confidence that when there was a big warming, it staggered in drunkenly that what was going on is that if you melt too much ice too rapidly, the North Atlantic surface freezes in the winter in places that it used to not freeze. It doesn't bring you an ice age. It doesn't make a great movie. It doesn't um, do much to the summers, but it really changes the winters, and that really changes some other things, and every time it did it, the monsoons weakened, and you get drying in Africa, drying in Asia, and southward motion of the tropical circulation in the Americas, and that's a small number of billions of people that see the loss of their rainfall and a few get a gain. The IPCC looked at this and they say, we have 90% confidence that, that Greenland won't melt fast enough to do that in the next century. 90%! But 90 is not 100. And faster is harder in this particular case. And so there, there's an interesting thing that's sitting there. All right. Now, um, that ice sheet that we were drilling into is a big pile of water. If you took that ice sheet and dumped it in the ocean, the east coast, you would lose more than the red. Um, I didn't do a west coast to scare you, but on the east coast, you would do more than the red. We don't think that this could happen faster than centuries, but within decades, we may commit ourselves to this. This is not a worst case. We could make color a bunch more red if we wanted a worst case. Okay, now... We've looked at this a little bit, what the ice sheets are doing. And um, and 2001, the IPCC looked at the ice sheets and they said, you know, we are uncertain about the ice sheets. There are big unknowns about this. There's a lot we don't know what to do about. But they said the best estimate is the flow won't change. And it'll snow more on top. And we've got 100 years before the ice sheets start raising sea level. The mountain glaciers will raise sea level. The ocean will warm and expand. But we got 100 years before the ice sheets do it. And in 2007, the IPCC looked at the ice sheets and said, oh, crap. <laughs> Not quite in those words. They said that, that um, the models, the, the ice sheets are shrinking. They're putting water in the ocean, and in part, it's because of warming. And they're 100 years ahead of schedule. And they said the models used today do not include the full effects of changes in ice sheet flow because of basis. And published literature is lacking. Our understanding is too limited to provide a best estimate or an upper bound on sea level rise. Okay, and they gave numbers. You've seen the numbers, and the numbers aren't terribly uh, appalling. Uh, they still matter to real people, but they've got this little box at the top, which you can't read from the back. I'll read it. It says, excluding future rapid dynamical changes in ice flow. <laughs> okay, if the ice goes, it goes. All right, so what do we know? Here's a couple things. 1960 is on your left, and 2010 is uh, over 2008, the data go all the way up to, to essentially modern. And on top is a coastal temperature record from Greenland. It was sort of warm, and it got cold, and it warmed up again. And Greenland was sort of shrinking and raising sea level, and then it stabilized, and now it's shrinking and raising sea level. Greenland doesn't care who makes it warm. If it gets warm, it tends to melt. And we've just put this one out, the CCSP, the U.S. government report. And this is looking at how big the ice sheet was or how much sea level from the ice sheet at various temperatures. Modern is here. And when it was warmer in the past, Greenland had put some water in the ocean. And when it was a few degrees warmer in the past, Greenland was gone. And it raised sea level 7.3 meters. So, um, and when it was colder in the past, Greenland was bigger. Now, in fact, Warmer makes more snow on top, but the more it snows, the smaller the ice sheet is because of melting winds. And Greenland doesn't care who made it warm. When it gets warmer, it melts. 